Good to see you folks this morning. And uh, it's not been a great morning for me. I just want to start out by saying that. You know, when your pastor, he gets treated a little rough. So you don't have to fool with it. I'm just going to Good morning, church. Then I'm going to like it. Happy to be here. I'm going to be here. I'm going to be here. I'm going to be here. And then we had a lady show up this morning and Brother Hughes said, Go in there and find a bald headed, ugly guy. He's our preacher. He came right to me. You know, how come she didn't go to somebody else? I mean, look at the terrible woman for me. <laughs> but either way, I can take it. I can take it. Uh, I do want to read, man. I'm doing an announcement this morning instead of Brother Matt because I want to introduce our guest this morning from Philadelphia Baptist Church. And you really missed a blessing if you didn't get to hear them last night. They shared and they went out to the children's home and uh, they're going to bless your heart this morning as they lead us in worship. And uh, we're blessed to have them here and to be a part of them. Uh, I want to do the announcements real slow this morning, though, because I've never heard so many people say, I didn't know we was having anything last night. And I said, well, we've just been announcing for a month. We'll have to make it two months from now on. And uh, uh, so uh, and bring a personal telegraph to your home the day before the event. But uh, no, we do want to... Uh, to, to clarify some things coming up. Next weekend, don't forget, next Saturday is our Resurrection Egg Hunt. Where we're going to have a good time. They're going to meet at 11 o'clock next Saturday morning back in the Belgian Hall. They'll have the Resurrection story there and uh, some hot dogs and all the trimmings that go with that. And then the egg hunt outside. So you come be a part of that next Saturday. And then as you see on the screen, the following Saturday is Easter. Saturday and Sunday is Easter weekend. Saturday night is literally Passover in the Jewish calendar. We're going to have a Seder meal, a Seder dinner here that night. And Dr. Reginald Lizzie, which you see an insert in your bulletin, more about him and what that Messiah in Passover is. And he's showing you everything that points to Jesus Christ in that Seder dinner, in that Passover meal. You do not want to miss this, folks. If, I, 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 I dare say probably... I, I probably count on one hand how many of you have ever been a part of one of those. And you don't want to miss it. But we're going to prepare for you if you sign up. All right? We need to know how many people we prepare for. So in your bulletin, there is a tear out this morning. You can still sign up next Sunday also, but now what we normally have prayer requests is a reservation for the Seder dinner. You need to either mark this, how many people are coming with your group, and uh, put it in the offering plate this morning, or call the office this week, or email us for Texas or something like that to sign up for this. And so uh, we need to know how many to prepare for. We can't just guess at that. So that will be two weeks from last night, the Savior dinner. Two weeks from last night. Please sign up. Uh, don't just show up and say, I didn't know I had to sign up. I promise you I will hear that. I promise you, I didn't know I had to sign up. Or somebody will call Saturday food and say, can I still come? I didn't sign up. I'm going to say, no, you can't come. No way. No, I'm joking. But uh, please get to help us out so we have an idea how many to prepare for uh, on that day. And then, of course, the next morning, Easter Sunday, we're not going to have sunrise service this year, but we are going to have Dr. Reginald Lizzie sharing with us probably a message about the first fruits. Uh, which was the feast that followed Passover, and how Jesus is our first fruits. You plan to come and be a part uh, of that. And then, of course, the crusade, which we've been talking to you about. Crusade is the week after Easter. Now, everybody look at me. Everybody look at me right quick, okay? When is the high school crusade? I, I, I heard three people. When is the Harvest Crusade at the high school? <laughs> April 8th through the 11th. Everybody hear that? Yeah. All right. I don't want to hear anybody say, I didn't know nothing about the Harvest Crusade. We've had it. So uh, 
We do need to uh, support that. Several of our churches have been coming together to reach our high school in this community for Jesus Christ. There are flyers here and out in the foyer that you can take. And please help us put them up in local uh, places, in the windows and doors and bulletin boards, wherever you can. Help us do that. And uh, we had a pretty good work day yesterday. We only had five people here. And we're thinking about stop having work days and maybe just hiring all the other ones here. Uh, no, we can't afford to do that. So we're not keeping our work days. We are going to have another one next Sunday. Next Saturday. Hope you can come and help us do a work day. Get some of the things fixed around here. We still have a lot of things need to be fixed. Flowers today. Thank you for reminding us, y'all. These are reminders to us today that today is the, the first heavenly birthday of Miss Glory Aldrin. One of our charter members has passed away. Today's her birthday. And this is in her name and her life. As you know, we dedicated our children's playground to her uh, a, few, a few weeks, a few months ago. And uh, we had family come last Wednesday night and said, you know, one of the reasons they came were little grandchildren. She lived two houses down, says her grandchildren keep seeing the playground. They keep wanting to come to church and be a part of what's going on here and, and play on the playground. And uh, so that's even been a draw to that family just to come and be a part of what our children are doing here in our church. So uh, we're thankful for that. We miss Miss Gloria and we want to honor her today. Let's uh, Let's pray together, and we're going to get started. Father, thank you today for Philadelphia Baptist Church. God, for their lives, their ministry, their touch, for this youth ministry that has come today to bless us, to speak to us, Lord. And God, just to be your servants, your messengers here today. We do love you. We thank you for loving us. We pray, Lord, that you would uh, bless in this service. God, just anoint them. How we can work through them. God, speak to our hearts today. We're here to listen. We ask you to have your way. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome to worship. Would you please stand with us?
You know, that is the reason we're here, is to serve our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we do believe that, for it is the power of the gospel that brings people to salvation. Amen. Be seated for just a moment. Thank you for letting us be here today. We're from Philadelphia Baptist Church. If you know where Pineville and Alexandria are, uh, we're basically from there. There's a little town called DeVille. We're about four miles out in the woods. And uh, we are thankful for what God's doing. This is what we call our student servant ministries. And these are students 7th grade through 12th grade that get the opportunity to do what we're doing today in places like nursing homes or churches. Um, we were hoping to get into a prison this weekend while we were here. But man, we've been running all the time and we haven't had the time. But we thank God for the opportunity to minister Jesus Christ to you. We've been to the children's home yesterday. We'll be at First Baptist Columbia tonight. We have a drum line, and it's made up of trash cans. We have a drama team and a stomp team that do routines, and those help us uh, get, get loudness out, get sound out to areas where we can draw people in and share the gospel. We have a youth choir, and you've seen our band, and we're thankful that we can use these tools, and these students can use these tools to reach people and draw people in to be able to share the gospel with them that Jesus Christ is King of kings and Lord of lords. So here's our drum line. And they're going to, uh, well, put your seatbelt on. Maybe, you know, don't, don't put your earplugs in because you'll miss a lot. God bless you.
Have you ever thought about? Thought about. Thought about. Have you ever thought about God? What about God? My life. My soul. What's my purpose? Does my existence have meaning? Am I okay? How do I really know? How do I know if I'm saved? Saved. 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 What if you were? Right now. Your heart stopped beating. And what if you were to stand before? Before an almighty God. Before a holy and a perfect God. And what if he were to rise up from his throne? And what if he were to look down at you in all of his majesty? And what if he were to point his finger at you? Say your name. And ask you. What if he were to ask you? Why should I let you into my heaven? What would you say? Romans 3.23. For all have sinned. All have sinned. All have sinned. Fall short of the glory of God. Fall short. Drugs and alcohol. Fall short. Lies. Lust. Fall short. Murder and hatred. For all have sinned and fallen short. Of the glory of God. Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death. 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 But the gift of God, but the gift of God is eternal life. But the gift of God is eternal life. But the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and his only son. That whosoever believes in him, believes in him, shall not perish. Death but have everlasting life. 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 Eternal life. I need him. I was in a deep hole. You need him. With no way of getting out. Death. 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 Until I look to the Lord. Life. We need him. Romans 5, 8. God demonstrates his own love. Love. Unconditional love. For us in this. That while we were still sinners. Hatred. Deceiving. Christ died for us. The king of kings. For a crown of thorns. Lord of lords. Was slapped in the face. Was beaten and scourged. The lamb of God. Was slaughtered. Jesus Christ. Murdered. For us. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead. Raised him from the dead. You will be saved. You will be saved. You will be saved. Death. I was scared. Terrified. Believe. My eyes were open. New life. It's never been the same. Through Jesus Christ. A song that lights up the sky. One breath that gives life. One sovereign in power. Who speaks with thunder and fire. One Lord. One King. There is no other that can compare to you. You are the one alone in greatness, the one who never changes. Jesus, you are the one who rose in power, the one who reigns forever. Jesus, one. 
one true God. One man on a cross, one light of the world, one name, one word, one way to be saved, one lamb that was slain, one love above all. There is no other that can compare to you. You are the one alone in greatness. The one who never changes. Jesus, you are the one who rose in power. The one who reigns forever Jesus you're the one true God you're the one true God and we have seen the glory of the one and only Son of God yes we have seen the glory of the one and only Son of God. Yes, we have seen the glory of the one and only Son of God. Yes, we have seen the glory of the one and only Son of God. You are the one alone in greatness no one who never changes jesus you are the one alone who's in power the one who reigns forever jesus you're one true god you're the one true God. You are the one true God. Living God. 
hanging on every word. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we only want to know you more. We're hanging on every
What a beautiful name. What a wonderful name.
one. Let's sing it out. Bow down before him. Bow down before him. He's Lord of all. Amen. we're so thankful Lord for the treasure that we have found in you Lord because Lord we, we have salvation we have um, Lord we felt your grace your mercy we know what's that, what that's like God because we remember what we were like before God we were saved we know what we were saved from God, we read your word, how you demonstrated your own love for us in this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And God, it, it blows our minds what we were saved from. Where we were destined to. God, because we know what we deserve. We deserve an eternal death in a place called hell. A place where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. God, I'd venture to say no one here wants to go. God, when we read about that place, it is a terrifying place. But Lord, it's also terrifying to try to go through this life without you as well. I'm so thankful for the precious blood of Jesus Christ. I'm so thankful that we can come before you and we can give you a sacrifice of praise this morning, that we can come before your altar and lay it all down and sing in absolute freedom to you because we have been saved. We have that comfort. We have that peace that passes all understanding. We're so thankful for you, God. For every tear that is sown, there shall be shouts of joy in heaven. And so, God, I pray this morning, God, that there would be tear. There would be tears over you. Just because, God, we're overwhelmed at how great your love is for us. And, God, we just can't sit still. God, we can't be silent. Lord, we're not going to let the rocks cry out for us. We're going to sing the praises of God, our King, who sent his one and only Son to die on the cross for us so that we can have life. Oh, God, we're thankful for you. Oh, what a Savior. 
how wonderful you are, how beautiful you are. As the psalmist said, let us worship you in beauty of your holiness, the splendor of your holiness. And so, God, we give you this worship this morning. I just pray that our hearts are in the right place. God, as we look into your word this morning, I pray, God, that it would just change us, God, forever. We didn't come in here just to spin our wheels or to go through the motions. We came to meet with the one true living God. And I just pray this morning that that would happen. God, that we wouldn't waste this time. We'd meet with you. See, you, you want to meet with us. So, Lord, we give you our full attention and speak through your word this morning. Amen. Amen. We want to let the children go out to children's church right now. We've got nursery for three year olds and then four year olds up through third grade. We've got children's church program for you. Come to this door. Yeah. Yes. Um, whatever you want to do. Both of you. Both of you. Well, praise the Lord. I wish I could go too. See you later. I know. I had fun in children's church. Praise the Lord for children's workers. Amen. Seriously. <laughs> Children's workers are God's gift to your church. Amen. They are. And we need more of them. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he is precious. <laughs> Well, praise the Lord. So thankful to be here. I know we, Brother Glenn has already spoke to you. I'm Stuart Sasser. I'm the youth pastor at Philadelphia Baptist Church. We are so thankful. And listen, your church has been so gracious to us. And, and uh, we're, hopefully we um, have cleaned up our areas, the bathrooms. We tried to make it better than what we, um, how we even found it. We wanted to be a blessing to you this week. And... Um, and hopefully we have been. And uh, hopefully you've been blessed already this morning. And uh, thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. We'd like to come back so we don't want to mess it up. Amen. <laughs> well, this morning, this morning, I want you to turn in your Bibles to Genesis chapter 41. We're in Genesis this morning. And uh, we're going to be talking about Joseph. And, uh, and I want to give you a little bit of backstory for those of you, if you, because I know um, we might have maybe some people who might not have read Genesis uh, chapter 41. I want to give you a little backstory. I know um, uh, I've got a couple of new people in my own youth group who, um, who are new at the whole church thing. And, uh, and so you, there might be someone in here that you've never read that. And I want to give you a little bit, a little bit of backstory. In uh, Genesis 41, starting in verse 14. You see, Joseph got excited about a dream he had. Are you with me? He got excited about this dream. And that his family were, in fact, his brothers were all going to bow down to Joseph. His brothers got so jealous that they, they threw poor Joseph in a pit. And then he was sold to the Ishmaelites as a slave. And then um, the Ishmaelites sold him to this guy named Potiphar. Are you with me? Say amen. Yeah. Yes, we got some amens in here. And then he was sold to Potiphar. And then Potiphar's wife um, tried to seduce him. Not good. So she tried to seduce him. And because you see, he was a slave of Potiphar. And then his Potiphar's wife tried to seduce him. But Praise the Lord, Joseph had integrity. And then so she, and so what ended up happening, she told a lie to her husband and had Joseph thrown into prison. And here he is again in another pit. So poor Joseph, he finds, finds himself in multiple pits, multiple situations. And then in prison, he met the king's chief baker. And he also met his, uh, also the king's chief, um, the, the Egyptian king, the chief baker, and the, uh, the cup bearer uh, for the king. 
And then um, God used Joseph during that time to interpret these two men's, their, their dream. Both of them had a dream. And so Joseph, um, um, God used our, uh, Joseph to interpret those two dreams. And then so uh, according to just as what Joseph interpreted, well, the baker, he died. The cupbearer lived just as Joseph had said. And so, but then Pharaoh, who is uh, another name for the Egyptian king, he, uh, he had a dream and it really bothered him. And, uh, and then all his, all his wise men, all his magicians could not interpret the dream, the dream. And so, but then all of a sudden, here's this cup bearer who has been put back into the rightful place to serve the king. And the king's all distraught, right? And then so the cup bearer's like, hey, 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 I know a guy. <laughs> and so here is where the cup bearer remembered Joseph. Genesis chapter 41, starting in verse 14. Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they quickly brought him out of the pit. And when he had shaved himself and changed his clothes, he came in before Pharaoh. So you can kind of, you can kind of see the picture here. Pictures being painted for us. Joseph probably looked pretty rough in prison. And so he changed himself, changed his clothes because he had to go before the king. And so as Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have had a dream. I've, I've had a dream. And there is no one who can interpret it. I've heard it said of you that when you hear a dream, you can interpret it, Joseph. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, well, listen, Pharaoh, it's not me. It's not me. God will give Pharaoh a favorable answer. The question that I have for you this morning is this. Is God your everything? It seems like a very simple question. Is God your everything? Is your total focus God? Are you totally dependent on Him? I want you to think about that. Is God your everything? I want to read you a story that's on my phone. I had to look it up. But it's called The Empty Chair. It goes like this. A man's daughter had asked the local pastor to come and pray with her father. When the pastor arrived, he found the man lying in bed with his head propped up on two pillows and an empty chair beside his bed. The pastor assumed that the, odd, uh, that the old fellow had been informed of his visit. He said, I guess, I guess you were expecting me whenever he walked in the room. He said, and, he, and the man lying in the bed said, well, no, who are you? Well, I'm the new associate at your, uh, at your church, the pastor replied. And when I saw the empty chair, I just figured that you knew that um, I was going to show up. Uh, oh, yeah, the chair, said the bedridden man. Uh, would you mind closing the door? Puzzled, the pastor shut the door. Uh, he said, look, I've, I've never told anyone this, not even, not even my daughter. Um, but, but all my life, I, I have never known how to pray. At church, I used to hear the pastor talk about prayer, but it, it, always, went, it always went right over my head. I abandoned any attempt at prayer, the old man continued, until one day, about four years ago, my best friend said to me, Joe, prayer is just a simple matter of having a conversation with Jesus. Here's what I suggest. Sit down on a chair, but place an empty chair in front of you, and in faith, see Jesus on that chair. It's not, it's not crazy because, you know, Jesus promised, I'll be with you always, and then and then um, just speak to him and listen to him in the same way that you're, you're actually talking with me right now. And so I tried it. And I focused. And I liked it so much that I do it a couple of hours every single day. I'm careful though. If my daughter saw me talking to an empty chair, <laughs> she'd either have a nervous breakdown or send me off to the funny farm. <laughs> The pastor is so deeply moved by the story and encouraged by the old gentleman to continue. He encouraged, encouraged him to continue on his own journey. And then he prayed with him and returned to the church. He had found a way to focus. Found a way to focus in prayer um, with, uh, with Jesus. So how do you focus? 
How do you focus? Here's Joseph. It's been 15 to 16 years since he's seen his family. and Some unfortunate circumstances have landed him in an Egyptian jail. But he continued to be faithful to God. And God has been with him everywhere he went. And so, if you're going to make the Lord, if you're going to make God your everything, you're going to be focused on him. You're going to be totally dependent on him. Does everyone want to be totally focused on him? And you want to make the Lord your everything? Say amen. Men, then this is what we need to do. Number one, we need to, when we do that, we need to realize, number one, that, I, and I know these are going to be simple points to you, for you this morning, but it's complicated for me because I'm not very smart. But number one, it's for your own good. It's for your own good. And sometimes we don't realize that, that it is for your own good to begin with. To really be focused, to really have to say to the Lord, you're everything you see. Because, because Joseph understood that. How many times do we want to take situations in our own hands, right? But it's for our own good to have our total trust in the Lord. Do you think the Lord wants to strike you down every time you sin? He's not some big, huge God upstairs who's like waiting for a lightning bolt. There he goes again. And whenever you mess up, the Lord wants the absolute best for you. It's not what he wants to do. It's for your own good to listen to him. And so, and so it's for your own good. He says, number, you, you, we, we read right here, Joseph says, look, it's not in me. To interpret this gene, this dream. It is the Lord. The Lord is the one who does the work, right? The Lord's the one who does the work. Number one, whenever it's for our own good, God will bring you through. God is the one who brings you through because he realized he couldn't do anything on his own power. And Joseph's life, his life is a testimony for all of us about the dependence of, on God. Making him our everything. We read in Philippians chapter 4. I can do all things through who? Through Christ. Who strengthens me. And so we get our strength through the Lord. And so I find when I try to do things. Oh, I find that I royally mess things up in a hurry. When I try to do things on my own. And so God is the only one that can bring you through. Number two, uh, that, that when I realize that it's for my own good, God is going to bless your integrity. He's going to bless your integrity. No matter the circumstance that Joseph fell into, right? God made him successful and blessed him. Um, what happened was, was that he trusted God. And in turn, others trusted Joseph because of his trust in the Lord. But listen to this. This is crazy. I don't know if you've ever got this out of this before, but because, because Joseph's trust was in the Lord, other people trusted in the Lord too. Because if you keep on reading, right? You keep on reading. And because whenever he like interpreted the dream, come on, this is exciting. Are you with me? Say amen. He interpreted the dream. And so there was supposed to be seven years, right? Seven years of, of, of plenty. And then after, and then the dream, because I, it's, it's, so there's like seven cows, fat cows, or skinny cows ate the fat cows. And then, and then, um, and then the stalks, and then he saw the, the stalks of corn. But see, so whenever he interpreted the dream, here's what happened. Pharaoh listened to Joseph. And so in essence, what happened was the Lord had saved the people of Egypt during that time. Did he not? Did he not save the people of Egypt from total famine, from total destruction? And so listen, for you this morning, are you putting, are you making the Lord your everything? And because of your trust in him, do other people trust in Jesus because of you? Come on, let that sink in this morning. So, God will bless your integrity. Man, look at Look at every, uh, everything that he had been through. How many times we, keep, we ourselves, we end up choo choosing the world when no one is looking. Potiphar's wife threw herself at him. But Joseph had a glimpse of what, does, what is to come. Don't we have a glimpse of what is to come this morning? 
Amen. Doesn't that make you excited? Doesn't that get you fired up about heaven? We have this hope that's inside of us and it's not a hope so. This is a biblical hope. This is a hope that we can't wait to attain. The Lord has placed this and we know what's to come. I'm fired up about that this morning. Man, I want to have integrity before God. And so God will bless your integrity. His eyes were on the prize. And, the, and old Potiphar's wife, and she paled in comparison. We know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him, who've been called according to His purpose. And so, not only, it's for your own good. God will bring you through. He'll bless your integrity. And, and you'll also be better off. You're going to be better off. Just depend on Him. He's got to be your focus. Look at the change that happened when Joseph was called by the king, right? We read in verse 14. And Pharaoh sent and called Joseph and quickly brought him out of the pit. And he was shaved himself and changed his clothes and came in before the king. Isn't that what the king does for you too? Come on. Isn't, isn't he the one that cleans us up? Isn't he the one that does all the work that he called us? And we got cleaned up. Now we, we get to go before the king. Praise the Lord. We got to meet with him this morning. When we sing praises to him this morning. And hopefully you haven't wasted your time sitting in here. Sucking in this air condition. This pretty sanctuary. Wasting your time. You could have met with the king earlier. Let him clean you up this morning. So that you can come before the king. How many of us, we've uh, made God or everything, have been lifted up out of the pit. You remember what you were like before you were saved, where you were destined? Do you understand what God has done for you? Amen. We should be preaching the gospel to ourselves every single day. Reminding ourselves what our Savior has done for us. Oh, Jesus is the only one. He's the only one that gives peace, comfort, confidence, and self-worth. It's for your own good. And it's also for the good of others. So we've understood now that it's for our own good. We make Jesus our everything. Are you with me? You with me? It's for our own good. We make Jesus our everything, but it's also for the good of others. It's for the good of others. And so here he is. God, he says, God will give Pharaoh a favorable answer. And so you see a desperate man here. Pharaoh was a desperate man. He was desperate. I mean, come on. He had called for all the wise guys in the land and uh, couldn't, get a hand, couldn't get an answer with a, for, the, for this dream. And then you know where he turned? To a guy in prison. <laughs> That's pretty desperate. Pretty desperate. Do you realize how many desperate people there are out there in the world who are turning every which way and we have the answer inside of us and it just needs to come out? I wonder how many Pharaohs there are in this world who need a touch from Jesus. I wonder if you're the one if you're the one that God's going to use to call forward and to use in this community. To fill up these empty seats. When do we say that enough is enough? Well, our church is, our church is full enough. When do we say, when do we draw the line? Well, well, Brother Mike, I like the small church and mentality. So what you're, what you're saying to me is this, is that, God, there's, there's enough people in here and, uh, and, that, and, and, the, and the work's over. We, we've kind of, we just need to stop because we've got our good, we've got enough people in here. I mean, is that what the Lord wants? That sounds horrible. I wonder how many Pharaohs there are. And you're going to be the one. God uses your circumstances and puts you in front of someone that you never thought that you would be in front of. That's exactly what happened to Joseph. Amen? And so here he goes. Pharaoh called for everyone. He said to Joseph, I have a dream. There's no one can interpret it. Can't you hear Joseph? Joseph says, listen, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in Christ. Joseph's 
focus and his attitude was like the psalmist in Psalm 84 verse 10. He says, better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be the stinking doorkeeper in the house of God than dwell in the tents of the wicked because I want to have integrity before the Lord. I want to be used by the Lord. I'm God, I want you to use me and, and I'm desperate myself. And you know what happens whenever I'm desperate to be used by the Lord? Then what, what happens is in turn, God uses you as an example to every other desperate person out there. How desperate are you this morning? There was a desperate man. There was a man that needed to be delivered. Pharaoh was asking for help. God will give him a favorable answer. How many of us are stuck in our own little world? In our own little pity party. I mean, look at what Joseph had gone through. We, are we the, the world's greatest complainers sometimes about the situations that we go through in our life? I mean, look at Joseph. Read his story. Read his story. But Joseph, here he was. He, uh, he wanted to be used. We must see that there is a design. There's a design. It's for the good of others. There was a desperate man. There was a man that needed to be delivered. And it's, there's a design that we need to remember that God is in control. And he's going to use your life for his glory. No matter the circumstances. He's going to use your life. Joseph was put in that place by God to be used by God. And Joseph reaped the benefits of this because Joseph made a choice to make God his everything. Totally dependent. His trust, his focus on him. You know what we say all the time? Yes, Lord, I trust in you. I trust you. But do you, let's just let that sink in. Isn't that one of the hardest things ever to do? Is to absolutely trust in the Lord with everything? It's hard. We just flippantly say, yes, yes, Lord, I trust you. And then we go off and do our own thing. It's a hard thing to trust in the Lord with everything. And we trust him that he saved us. And we're, God's still working in us. And so it's a hard thing. But two years had gone by since he had been the, the cupbearer. But what if the cupbearer told Pharaoh about him two years earlier, and uh, Joseph was able to leave for his homeland two years earlier. Huh? But it wasn't in the plan. It wasn't in the plan. It's hard to see the big picture. And in fact, you know what? We really can't. Really can't see the big picture all the time. What God is doing, how he's using you in the scope of eternity. Who knows? What divine appointment, how God is going to use you. It could be a hug. It could be a, a, a phone call. It could be, it could be, it doesn't matter what it is and how God is going to use you. More than likely, there's someone in this room who is so depressed that even probably within the last month, there's probably someone in this room, sitting in this room, who was thinking about suicide within the last month in a crowd this size. And you don't know who they are. You don't know their backstory. You don't know what they're going through. What kind of touch? How are you going to allow God to use you? We need to get our eyes off ourselves. Focused on the Lord. When, whenever we are totally dependent on Him, God uses us not only for our own good, but for the good of others. Who's, who knows what life will be saved because you allowed God to move through you? You have no idea. We can't see the big picture. Oh, but it's going to be a glorious day one day, isn't it, Brother Mike, whenever we're in heaven? And there's going to be someone who might walk up to you and they might say, they might say, Brother Glenn, you don't know this, but I almost ended my life. Or, Brother Glenn, you don't know this, but you led me to the Lord. Who knows? Who knows what might happen? You don't. You don't know the impact in the scope of eternity. It's for the good of others. Because there's a design. God wants to use you. Oswald Chambers said, if you're going to be 
If you're going to be used by God, he will take you through a multitude of experiences that are not meant for you at all. Um, they're meant to make you useful in his hands. I remember when I was on a uh, Brazil trip. A, um, um, a, uh, let me see what time it is. Oh, goodness. All right, I'll wrap it up quick. Um, I was on this mission trip to Brazil. And uh, each day, man, I was fired up each day. We were seeing people come to know the Lord. And, and uh, there was one night that we, were, we had just we struck out. And everybody that we had went up to and uh, tried to present the gospel to, we just couldn't. Um, they, you know, I, I, I wanted to lead someone to the Lord so bad. And, uh, and so we had come back to the church. And in Brazil, they have little restaurants um, that are on the street corners and then they take out uh, uh, this uh, uh, it's, it's really pool um, 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 furniture like uh, those plastic white tables you know what I'm talking about plastic chairs and they're just sitting out in the middle of the street and the waitress would take the order in the middle of the street and cars would be just going by the tables and, and so we'd be standing on the street corner and the restaurant was right across the street at the church and, um, and this young um, interpreter was standing beside me and we'd struck out everywhere we went and she said, hey look, what about those two guys over there? And I, and I looked across the street and there were the two biggest, baddest, meanest, military, Brazilian military police sitting there eating their burgers. And I said, they're eating. <laughs> we don't need to bother them. They're eating. And she looked up at me and she said, well, they need Jesus too. What do you say to that? <laughs> okay, let's go. Listen, I, I'm telling you, I was scared to death. I was shaking in my shoes. I was wearing boots. And I was so shaking and, and, and I, I was scared to death. And because they had their automatic AK-47s laying on the table right there in front of me. And, and so as I was walking, I did not want to get arrested. And, uh, and Brazil is, uh, is, is a communist country and, and I'm, I'm, I'm scared. And so we walk up to it and to them, listen, I, I, long story short, I started talking to them and telling them about how, how um, number one, I was going to butter them up a little bit because <laughs> how, what a great job they were doing. I'm so thankful for what they're doing. But as I started talking to them, to them about how much they need Jesus, all of a sudden I looked over and this, this gentleman who was sitting here, this military police officer, a tear started coming down his cheek. And then he just started crying uncontrollably. Looked across the other guy. He started getting red in the face too. And little did I know that was a divine appointment that I was about to miss out on. And because I had my eyes on me, I was scared to death. Listen, presenting the gospel, it's, it's awkward in this world. It is because this world does not know Jesus. They're lost. You can't expect lost people to act saved. And so, so it's awkward. It was awkward. I was scared to death. But all of a sudden, it was a, I realized the Lord had me there for a reason. And listen, please, please, those two gentlemen, they prayed to receive Christ. But you know the most beautiful part? He called the waitress over. And I thought, well, she fixing to get saved too? What's happening here? And uh, he, he pulled out his phone. Pulled out his phone he, and he turned his video on, on his iPhone. And he told the waitress, he said, can you video this? Because I want this for my whole family. And I'm not going to be able to tell them about this. And so, so who knows? Listen, who knows how many people have gotten saved within that next couple of days. And in my stupidity, I was going to pass that moment up. Are you hearing me this morning? How is God going to use you in this next week? Aren't, and don't you want to pray? God, would you put someone in my path so that I can tell someone about you? That's a dangerous prayer, but a prayer every single one of us should make. God, how are you going to use me? 
I almost messed that up. And that's what we do. Lastly, it's for the glory of God. It's for the glory of God. It's not all about us. It's for the good. It's for our good. It's for the good of others. But it's for the glory of God. Joseph said, God is the one who will give the answer. He's going to give the answer. He gives grace. And he's the one. He's the one. Look, it could have been uh, God didn't have to give Pharaoh the dream in the first place, did he? Did he have to give him the dream? He didn't have to give him no dream. It could have been living it up, living it up for seven years. And then all of a sudden, boom, seven years of famine. And then the entire nation would have went down. God gave grace. And I wonder how many of us in this room, we are living it up thinking that everything's going to be okay, but it might not be okay tomorrow. You might not even make it home today. I'm not saying that to scare you, but because it's a reality. In our schools, we didn't think that people would come into our schools and start shooting things up, but it happens. And it can happen in this town. And we're playing, we're playing with fire and we think we have tomorrow. The Bible tells us that life is but a breath. You're living it up. God, God gave grace and, and it's for his glory to give grace. And then he gains the glory through it all because God takes center stage. King was led to believe that Joseph was an expert as if he had superior training that all the others didn't have in Egypt. But Joseph had, Joseph responded that he had no such abilities. Nope, nope. The, my worth is in the Lord. It's, it's for your good, ladies and gentlemen, to bring glory to, to the Lord. It's for your benefit to understand that it's only God that really looks good. He's the one. God receives all the glory for everything. The cup bear remembered Joseph just in time to bring glory to him. The glory still went to God. And with God, lastly, lastly, you get a guarantee. When you bring glory to God, you get a guarantee. Look down at verse 29. Read with me in verse 29. There will come seven years of great plenty throughout the land of Egypt. But after them, there will arise seven years of famine. And all the plenty will be forgotten in the land of Egypt. The famine will consume the land and the plenty will be unknown in the land by reason of the famine that will follow. For it will be very severe. It's going to be severe. And, and the, the doubling of Pharaoh's dream means that this thing is fixed. It's fixed by God. And God will surely, surely bring it about. I'm telling you the truth. That if you fail to act, even if you fail to act this morning, it's not going to be good. You fail to act in some way, in some way, even to make Lord, the Lord your everything. When even throughout this week, it's not going to be good. Because to make the make Lord your everything, we strive to do that. To put our total trust in Him. Listen, it's for your own good. It's for the good of others. And don't think that your sin does not affect other people and pull other people down. Because it does. You're not in your own little world. You, there are people that you touch. It is for you your good and for the good of others and it's for the glory of God. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me and if you don't do something about it, it's not going to be good at all. Romans 10, 9 tells if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. But if you do nothing about it, it's not going to be a good thing. Some of you have made him, some of you have not made him your everything. In fact, he's your something. He's just your something. Or maybe we should rename, maybe we should just rename our churches. Um, this is the First Baptist Church of Convenience. It's just convenient for me to show up this morning. Is that what we've reduced Christianity to? Is that being a true follower of Jesus? Absolutely not. This is not the First Baptist Church of Convenience. It's not all about you. It's for the glory of God. Some of us, we try to fit Him in whenever we can. 
You're not enjoying a victorious life with Christ where you're an instrument in his hand and you can't count it all joy or give thanks in all circumstances. You're just trying to get by and you're, 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 you're either cruising or you, you, you don't want anyone to rock the boat. So is he your something? Revelations 3, chapter 15, or chapter 3, verse 15 says, I know your works. You are neither cold nor hot would that you would either, I, I just want you to be cold or hot. Um, so because you're lukewarm, you're neither hot nor cold and I will spit you out of my mouth, the Lord says. You make him sick. But for us, Jesus said, he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful. But the workers are few. So pray to the Lord to send workers into the fields. But for some of us, some of us, he's not even, he's not even our something. He's our nothing. He's our nothing. You know what? I didn't finish this story. Pastor was deeply moved by the story and encouraged by the, uh, the gentleman he encouraged him to continue on his journey. And he prayed with him and returned to the church. Are you with me? Say amen. amen. Two nights later, the daughter called to tell the pastor that her daddy had died that afternoon. Remember, this was the man who put the empty chair and he was, he was praying to his Lord. Two nights later, the daughter called to tell the pastor that her daddy had died that afternoon. Did he seem to die in peace? He asked. Yes, when I left the house around two o'clock, he called me over to his bedside, told me one of his silly little jokes and kissed me on the cheek. And when I got back from the store an hour later, I found him. He had passed away. But there was something strange, in fact, she said. Beyond strange. It was, it was kind of weird. She said, apparently, just before Daddy died, he leaned over and rested his head on a chair that was sitting beside his bed. Ladies and gentlemen, what's your focus? What's your focus this morning? Is your focus this morning that you want to rest your head on the lap of Jesus? Is your focus this morning, that that's where you want to be? You want to know the heartbeat of God. Is that your focus this morning? Is He your everything this morning? Because you've got to realize that He can't just be your something. He can't just, He definitely can't be nothing to you. He's got to be your everything you bow your head and close your eyes and ladies will you come play on your guitars would you stand with me Father, I'm praying, I'm praying, God, that right now, Lord, that you're dealing with someone in this room. God, I know that you're dealing with multiple people in this room. God, because we've opened up the word of God and your word, you tell us, does not return void. And so, Father, I'm praying over the people in this church who are standing in here, God, because really there, there is someone in this room that you're, you're working on their heart right now. Lord, for whatever reason it is, God, you are wanting to draw them to you. God, it might be, God, that they need to repent of their sin. God, and, and, and maybe they've already made you Lord of their life, but God, they're not really living like it. The Bible tells us that Jesus said, for what does it profit someone to gain the whole world yet to lose his own soul? And what about you? Are you trying to gain this world? But those of us as Christians, we can live like it. Like we're trying to gain this world. We make Jesus our everything in here this morning. What about you? I've already read Romans chapter 10 verse 9 which says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, that means He is the Lord of your life. You you completely surrender and you give him your everything. And so this morning, this morning, 
If you were to stand before the Lord this morning, could you tell him without a doubt, God, you are my everything. It's not enough that he's your something. So what kind of decision do you need to make this morning? Those of you this morning, if if you were, if that would be a scary moment for you to stand before a living God who wants to save you, but but what if you were to stand before Him right now? I would like to, I'd like to lead you in a prayer that you once and for all, you can ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior and it does not have to be a scary moment for you. You can make Him your everything this morning. But what you need to do, it's the prayer. The prayer can't save you. It is the attitude of your heart and you can talk to Him and ask Him to save you. And I want to lead you in this prayer. But if... but but. It's not the words that save you. It is the conversation that you have with a God who wants to save you. So if you're standing in this room right now and you know that you need to ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, because He's not your everything, you have not made Him Lord of your life, and you bow your head and in your own heart, just pray this prayer after me. Dear Jesus, I know that I am a sinner. I know that I can't save myself. And I am desperate for you to save me this morning. God, I need you. God, would you come into my heart and save me from my sin. I confess that I am a sinner. I need you to save me. I know what you did, that you sent Jesus to die on the cross for me. And three days later, he rose again, conquering death, hell, and the grave so that I can have life. So I receive you now. I receive Jesus as my Savior. And I put my total trust in you. This morning, I want to make you my everything. Thank you, God, for saving me. Amen. Every head bowed and every eyes closed. I'm not going to draw this out. Brother Mike, Brother Hugh, would you come forward? Listen, if you prayed that prayer, I'm not going to ask you to come forward at this moment. I just want to pray for you. If you prayed that prayer this moment, would you just raise your hand? Nobody's looking around. Would you just raise your hand saying, I prayed that prayer this morning. Is there anyone in the room, you prayed that prayer and you asked Jesus to be your Savior. You made Him your everything. That's you. All I want to do is pray for you. Is there anybody like that? Just want to pray for you this morning. Anybody like it? Raise it high so we can see it so I can pray for you. Okay. What we want to do is we want to give a time of invitation this morning. You just be obedient to, uh, to the Lord. You know, in fact, you may be visiting this church this morning and, and you may be saying, you know what? Washita Baptist Church is a place that I would like to, uh, I'd like to be a part of. And you might want to come and, uh, and talk to, to Brother Mike, Brother Hugh, about how you can become a member of this growing church of God that loves Jesus. You want to become a part of this fellowship? You can come forward this morning. They would love to talk to you about that. Whatever reason, if it's about your salvation or it's about how you need to make the Lord your everything, you come forward, you be obedient to him this morning.
come to an altar this morning and pray. Maybe you just need to talk with someone. Come on. Right now. Maybe this morning you don't know what you need to do and you just like to counsel with someone. Want someone to pray with you in these next couple of minutes. Would you come? We'd be glad to pray with you. You know, our invitations don't end when the music stops. It's an opportunity for you to come even at the close of this service when we dismiss here in a moment and come to me or Brother Hugh or one of the other leaders here and say, still need to talk with someone. Some things I need to make peace with God about. And we want to give you the opportunity to do just that. So as we go out this morning, I hope that you'll come by and, and thank the youth from Philadelphia Baptist Church Thank them for coming and ministering to us. And uh, Brother Stewart, Brother Glenn, many of you may know Brother Glenn. He grew up here in the West Monroe area in the big community called Balcomville. <laughs> well, Glenn say one well, from Balcomville, but he's probably from one of them big towns like Brownsville or somewhere close by. <laughs> he's a ransom guy. But, uh, but Brother Glenn, uh, his family's here. In fact, his brothers are here this morning, and uh, we're glad, glad that they're here today, and his folks, uh, his, his uh, family. But uh, Brother Glenn and I started working together back in the 1990s. He was singing with some groups, and he came on and led the worship for us at Highland Park Baptist Church in Monroe. And we've just been real close friends over the years. And I'm grateful for him coming with this group today and leading them in music. And he's now a worship leader down at Philadelphia Baptist Church in DeVille. Uh, hope y'all have had a comfortable stay and uh, plenty to eat. And uh, so uh, as you leave today, this church here will put pounds on you, if nothing else, when you leave. And uh, Miss Dawn wanted me to remind all of you who are helping with Vacation Bible School. To, there's a meeting at 4 today. Uh, in the fellowship hall to start talking about Vacation Bible School. It seems like there's always something coming up on the schedule. And so go ahead and be thinking about being here for that today. Hey, thank this group before you leave. If you enjoyed them being with us today, would you show them uh, one more round of applause and thankful for them being here today? We did outreach in the community yesterday morning. We walked a lot of streets and uh, probably knocked on three or 400 homes yesterday. And some of you visiting this morning, our uh, folks that we talked to yesterday, thank you for coming and being a part of our service this morning. We want you to come back and be a part of what God's doing here. 
I do want to remind you one other thing. Next Saturday, please come help us before Easter. Next Saturday morning, what time, Brother Wayne? Do y'all trying to start doing the, uh, huh? 8 o'clock. Come help us. We do need more people helping get things done. I think Wayne said we still got about 20 things on the list that need to be done. Uh, from fixing lights, uh, washing things. And when we say that, we do mean all the men help us. And ladies, even you can come. There's cleaning to do inside and things like that. And we need everybody to show up and help with that. Uh, we can't get it all done with four or five people. So please come next Saturday and help us out. We need all you guys to be here and be a part of that. And so we don't have but a few guys, two or three guys on a committee that kind of helps make the list, but they need help getting it all done. So I do pray that you will come and help us get that done next Saturday morning. All right? Glenn, Stuart, and all of you adults who came with the youth, thank you all for coming and being with us today. You've been a blessing to us this weekend. And uh, let's close in prayer and uh, see you back here tonight uh, for choir at 5 and Bible study and then worship at 6. Father, tonight... Uh, Lord, we pray you bring us back to this place safely. But, Lord, as we leave today, we thank you for these who've come. God, we know they've blessed us, and we pray now you would bless them. God, that you'd give them safe travel home, and, God, that you would use them. And uh, the church in Columbia, where they'll be doing ministry tonight, God, I know that they've enriched our lives, and they've uh, encouraged us, Father. They've, they've led us in worship and, Lord, we know that, uh, God, they've, they've given us some ideas. And, and Father, they've, they've been a great example for us this weekend. And, Lord, may we learn from them. Thank you for them. Thank you for their willingness to come. And, Lord, we just pray that you just bless. God, continue to use them, Lord, to strengthen and encourage other churches and your kingdom's work. And, God, I thank you that for each of these who've come today, and Lord, I pray that uh, even as we, as we seek your face this week, Lord, that we'll go out and we'll share with others the good news of Jesus Christ, that we'll not hold it to ourselves, but God, that, that through a faithfulness and an obedience, Lord, we will be unashamed of the name of Jesus. And God, may we wear that title, Christian, proudly, because it means we're followers of Christ. For he is our Lord and our Savior, my prayer is. God, that we know him, his love, and his grace. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen and amen.